yeah, I, I want to manage. And um, this is an amazing club to be to be manager of. Um, but yeah, I think I think the time has come to to say that. Uh, I make no secret of it, secret of it at all. Uh, I want to manage. So David Unsworth, currently in charge of the under 23s or now in caretaker charge of the, the first team, has said that, that he wants the job. If you want the job, you must think you can do better than the previous manager. Can any manager coming into Everton now finish better than seventh place? I don't think he's, he's saying it because he thinks he can do better. I just think... It's, or maybe I, better than he's done so far yeah, this season. But I, I feel that what, what he, he just wants the opportunity, maybe, um, at a club he knows very, very well. But when you've got the owner saying that, you know, what was it about the Hollywood? He said North West is like the Hollywood now of, yeah. of football. And that says to me he wants a big name, you know, and yeah. I think he said that in around trying to get someone like Koeman, we saw that worked out for him. The, thing, the worry I have for David Unsworth is him coming out and saying he wants to manage, isn't it particularly saying he wants to manage Everton? You know, if there's a new manager that comes in, is he going to feel thre threatened by David Unsworth, who, who might be taking over now for a little bit do, and, and, and do pretty well? And then the new manager comes in, is he going to be feel threatened by the fact that there's somebody who wants this job and done pretty well with it? And is, is that, does that then mean that David Lanzo has to leave Everton? Like we've seen Craig Shakespeare now have to leave Leicester because he's come in, done a job, done OK, and then they've moved him on. You know, so I worry about that. And is that going to cause him a problem with his progression into management? It's quite a tricky situation, I mm. think, because, as you said there, like, he's probably got a good relationship with another 23, mm. developing young players, and all of a sudden he's, he's kind of put, not a target on his back, but the moment he's come out and said, oh, yeah, I want the job, all of a sudden now, if he doesn't get the job, as you said, does he then have to go elsewhere to progress because mm. he wants to become a manager, knowing that the club didn't really fancy him as becoming a manager? So it's kind of a tricky situation, I feel like. I think what else as well, Kels, is that he's, uh, he's, he's also making people aware that he wants to mm. manage. Because that's what he actually said there, yeah, I want to manage, time's come for me to say that. So he's been, I think he's been pretty clever about it. Mm, and, and clearly his, his coaching methods are working because he's, he's got, had great success with, with Everton's under-23s. What do players want differently from, from their coach and from someone who is more of a managerial figure, do you think? I don't know. I mean, sometimes I guess it's just different ideas. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe sometimes when, when something's not working and the manager keeps trying to do the same things and it's just clearly not working, you become stale. Mm. And I think as players, you know, if something's not working, like if you can't get the best out of me, then eventually you're going to be like, well, listen, we're not, get, we're not doing very well, so let's just give up. Yeah, it, starts, it starts getting a little bit um, like, you know, in the dressing room, it festers and people say, no, mm. it was a poor session, he's this, he's lost the plot. And those things start happening. It's the players not playing as well as they can do because. They know that the manager's under pressure and he might be gone and they might be there thinking, you know, the new manager might be coming and, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm just going to wait for him to come. It's like ultimate excuses, mm. really. That's what starts to come out. When the manager's struggling and the, the results and the performances drop, ultimate excuses there, well, I don't like the manager's methods mm. or uh, it's the same thing again, we're not freshening anything up, we're going to get beat again this yeah. weekend. And and it way... just becomes same after same yeah. and after a while you need a change. And the way they played the other day, Kells, that don't look like, to me, like they're playing for a manager. They weren't playing. Even, even at this early stage? Uh, no, not at all. They just looked all over the place. There was no energy in the team. Uh, they didn't seem to know what they were doing. And it's like I say about when you're talking in the dressing room, it starts to go around, yeah, he's having a nightmare. You've got experienced players playing really poorly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people are constantly digging up, like Ashley Williams, Leighton Baines. You know, the experienced players like that, they know how to play well even when it's not going right, but they just look so out of sorts. But it, it's changed so quickly. I mean, it was the start of this season when he was talked about as being a future Barcelona manager. He wasn't being linked immediately yeah, with I the think... job, but, it, but he was asked questions about it. Yeah, it was, it was that, a possibility. Yeah, but that was, only, that was only because he's a former Barcelona player, because if you look at um, the way Everton's season finished last year, they, they didn't finish the season last, last five games particularly well. So it's kind of... Gone from the end of last season, it's gone into this season. And, you know, yes, he's a, he's a high-profile manager. He's played for Barcelona. He's a world-class player. And Barcelona do like to, um, to, to promote their own people who have been involved. So that's why I think that link came. But when you look at the, the clubs he's been at, he hasn't done particularly well here. He hasn't done particularly well. He's never finished lower than seventh. In yeah. the Premier League table. He's done OK. <laughs> <laughs> his, just, his, teams don't, just they, that yeah, his teams don't pull up trees. And yet, and yet, you know, the perception of someone like Sean Dyche, who's doing it in very different circumstances from a Southampton or, or from an Everton, his, his star has almost never been higher. It feels as though he's added to that, that Burnley style of play this season. Again, he's got some really good results. They've improved on their, their away form this season. 
Does a manager, and he is still a Burnley manager, yeah. does a manager, if, if he wants to move on, have to strike while the iron's hot? Because, as we've seen with Koeman, reputations can change so quickly. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think that's not just being a manager either. As a player, when, when it's hot, you, you, you want to move. And to be mm. fair, it's a, it's a big opportunity for him because Everton Football Club is a massive football club, obviously. No disrespect to Burnley, but Everton's, you know, I mean, it's, it's massive. It's, it's, it's not, not a no-brainer. So for him to get that kind of opportunity, I'm sure in the back of his mind, even now being linked with it, he'll probably yeah. be thinking about it. It's, there's no, he can't hide it if he's thinking about it because it's a massive opportunity. So I think what he's done for Burnley, especially the last couple of seasons, because I'm sure people would have expected him to have gone, gone by now. And they were solid last season. I've had a good start this season. So if anything, he deserves it. And to be fair, if he, if he wants to obviously take that step forward, it's, a, it's probably the perfect platform, like a clean slate, because I don't think he's going to go in there and only get six months. I think mm. he's going to get time to build the team that he wants, get the players in that he wants. And, and go from there. And if this, and if the the owner is anything to go by, he's gonna, he's gonna give him the money. We've seen that he's not afraid to give a manager the money to spend mm. there. And with his organisation skills, Sean Dyche, if he does go there, we're talking about him like it's gonna happen. If he does go there, you could see, with the way Everton play and the way the fans get behind them, uh, you could see them, you know, doing a lot better. Is it? Is it? A different skill going into a transfer market, <laughs> operating at, at Burnley's level and, and the budget that they have, and operating at the level that, that Everton have under the, the new investment. It, do you need a different eye to spot a player, or is it the same for, at, at each level? No, I think you, you still need the, the eye um, in respect of the player you're trying to get, but it depends on if you can afford them. I'm sure that um, somebody who's, who's, who's looking at a player from Brighton and someone who might be looking at a player from Everton, they've got the same eye for him, but can't, we can't afford him, so we can't maybe look at him. But with, with um, Burnley and Everton, the, the difference in the player that they can get, yes, you might get a, a scout who says, well, we like him, but we can't afford him, but whereas he goes to Everton, they like him and they can afford him, then all of a sudden, someone like Sean Dyche is then able to get the kind of player so then we could see Sean Dash maybe playing in a different and more expansive way because he's now getting players that can also put into um, play his, his offensive and implement his offensive um, way he wants to play. So it'd be interesting to see Sean Dyche with a bit of money and backing behind yeah. him. I think he's got, he, he, you can see with Sean Dyche, he's got a, a, a way he likes to play and you can see the, t the type of player he likes to play uh, and go and get someone who's going to work hard, put a shift in for the team. Not maybe so many superstars, but just guys at 1 to 11 that are going to obviously put the work in, work hard, give 110% every week. And I think that's why he's getting the best out of Burnley. And I think if he does go to Everton and get that type of player, obviously he'll have the money to maybe go and bet a few more, say, stars, but also I think the same type of player that he'll still get will be the same type of Burnley's got for Burnley. And you saw, as you, as you said, he has a very definite way that he, he likes to play, a very definite base that he likes to build on. You saw with Tarkovsky coming in mm. that he managed to slot seamlessly in to that, that Burnley side, and he's, the players seem to be able to adapt to it. So how much, as a player, do you appreciate having that really clear template to, to play in, or is it, is it more frustrating for a forward? Uh, not really. I mean, obviously, Chris Wood's gone there as well, and he's, he's done particularly well at, at Burnley, to be fair. But I, I guess, from a playing point of view, when a manager says straight away, like, listen, I want to sign that person, then automatically, regardless whether you think, well, the way he plays the game doesn't really suit me, you're already kind of flying because, you know, the manager wants you, you're his signing. Mm. So I think for, for someone like a forward player like Chris Wood, as I said, I mean, he's got a few goals already, and he's done really well since he's gone there. So I don't reckon it, it matters what kind of shape he's going to play. I, I think he's just looking to get the best out of these players, and I think he's managing to do that. Um, Leicester and Everton are reported to be slightly concerned that they're going after the same candidate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you think... I mean, Sean Dyche, obviously, is the, is the manager whose, whose name at the moment is, is being linked with the two positions. He is, we keep saying, still the Burnley boss. Mm. Um, if you were making the, the choice, one, where would you advise him to go? And two, where, where do you think he'd be drawn to? Um, I, I'd advise him to go to Everton. It's the next, next step up for him, um, with all due respect to Leicester. Um, Former Premier League champion, recent Premier League champions? Yeah, but we're talking about something that's, you know, the stars aligned, everything happened. It was an unbelievable thing, I'm not sure. And I think we've seen from that point to now how Leicester have, 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 have progressed since that time. They've not, for me, They've not got any better. They've been the Leicester that we'd expect them to be. But I feel that if he went there, I think it's a sideways, sideways step for him. Whereas Everton, you asked if he could get them, if he can make them get any further than seventh. Carl, I think that's going to be tough. But with that kind of manager and the backing that the, the owner's going to give him, you know, he can have a real good go at it because of his organisation skills.